Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So as we are talking about that particle uh, separation by different mechanism like uh, you know that uh, gravity uh, effect based on you know that cyclonic uh, effect or you can say that cyclone separator or you can say that what is that uh, you know uh, centrifugal action and uh, they are uh, you know uh, we have learned about that uh, mechanism of you know gravity effect and centrifugal force how uh, it is acting on the particles and how that particles can be separated based on that centrifugal action compared to the gravity effect and uh, they are uh, we have also learned that uh, what is the you know collection efficiency of that equipment like you know uh, cyclone separator and centrifugal uh, you know separator and also we have learned about that uh, what are the different factors affecting on that collection efficiency. Here also we will learn something more about that uh, particle separation by other mechanism. This mechanism is called electrostatic precipitator. So uh, uh, you know uh, by this electrostatic precipitator how that particles will be separating based on that force of that electrostatic force. You know you will see that this type of equipment for separation of that particulate material generally widely used in uh, industry especially ranging from you know that uh, uh, cleaning up uh, flue gases from uh, largest power plants to those you know separation of particles in the uh, household air cleaners like this. So this particulate materials separation based on this electrostatic force is being separated out. Here you will see that one uh, you know uh, video how that electrostatic uh, force can be you know acting on the particles to separate those you know materials from the uh, dirty gases. So there you will see that uh, one important components will be coming here that uh, initially that particles will be you know made charging uh, based on that some charging methodology that is called corona mechanism that uh, particles first uh, will be charged in the chamber and then uh, after charging that particles uh, whatever charge will be there there will be also that some electrostatic uh, you know or you can say that some electric field will be generated so that that oppositely charged particles you know will be you know attracted to that you know electrode in a you know electric field. So in this way that particles will be separated. Now here you will see that some uh, you know that uh, some dirty you know gaseous uh, stream will be coming to that you know a chamber where that chamber uh, will be you know uh, consisting of you will see that some cathode and anode and uh, there that anode initially will be you know allowed to you know make it a high voltage effect and uh, around you know several thousands of voltage to be created there and based on that voltage you will see that uh, either anode or cathode will be you know discharging uh, some ions to the atmosphere that means in the that uh, surrounding of that you know electrode or anode. So in that case uh, that ions will be attaching to the particles and after that whenever electric field will be produced that uh, cathode will become uh, you know uh, accordingly that whether oppositely or negatively charged uh, cathode or anode. So based on that charge of that particles, those particles will be attracting to the opposite, uh, you know, uh, charged, you know, anode or cathode. So in that case, that particles will be depositing on that, you know, oppositely uh, charged uh, cathode or anode, uh, you know, or it is called electrode. So uh, from that uh, electrode, you will see that uh, uh, after deposition of that particles, it will be separated either by shaking or other you know mechanism. So uh, this is basically the uh, you know principle of that you know electrostatic precipitator 
based on which you will see that uh, how particles can be you know separated just by mechanism of charging of those particles just making that uh, high electric volt in the environment. So, let us uh, discuss that things uh, here as per schematic diagram here. So, initially you will see that uh, in this picture you will see that uh, incoming uh, gas with particles will be entering to the chamber where you will see that there will be a one you know that uh, metal plates and uh, also there will be a, you know metal rods. So, metal rods and metal plates will be you know considering as a electrode. Now, in that case you will see that that thin metal rods you will see there will be that you will see that one electric field will be imposed on that uh, region uh, through which that charged particles will be flowing. So, before flowing that charged particles you have to make the particle charged. So, for that you have to use some mechanism to you know make this particle charged. So, that mechanism it is called corona. Generally uh, at very high voltage you will see that particle will be charged by this corona discharge. What is that corona discharge? Basically when high voltage will be applied between these two electrodes you will see that from an electrodes you will see some ions will be released to the air and then air or gas maybe the so, gas ions will then to be attached to the you know particles so in that way particles will be attached by that ions so whatever type of ions will be produced the particles will become that type of ions that means if suppose by corona discharge there will be some electron will be discharged so negative ion will be you know produced so, that negative ion would be attached on the particles. So, particles will become the negative ion particles. And after that, an electric field when it will be imposed on the region through which that ionic particles would be flowing, you will see that that electric uh, you know field will cause that particle to migrate to the oppositely charged electrode that is metal plates here. And that will be you know that at the right angles to the direction of the gas flow. So, in this way we can say that initially that after you know applying that high voltage like several thousands of voltage particles are charged by means of corona which is generally established surrounding a highly you know charged electrode here as shown in the thin metal rods it is as red one which release electrons at this several thousands voltage environment. Then an electric field will be imposed on the region through which the, the charged particles with gas is flowing. After that the electric field causing the particle to migrate to the oppositely charged particle charged uh, electrode that is metal uh, plates you can say here at the right angles to the direction of the gas flow. So, this oppositely charged particles will be depositing on that charged electrode there and those particles will be collected you know after deposition as a layer on that on the electrode plate and that will be collected periodically by you know either wrapping it or by other mechanism. So, this is the main principle of electrostatic precipitator. So, in very simple way we can say that initially particles will be charged by just corona discharge method and then electric field will be imposed on it and then when particles will be charged it will be migrated to the oppositely charged electrode and there it will be deposited and then it will be collected by wrapping it. This is the simple way to say that how electrostatic precipitator is working. Okay. So, this is main mechanism based on which you can get the separation of the particles from the atmosphere. Now, in this case there are two types of electrostatic precipitator you will observe or you can see in the market. If the same pair of electrodes serves for particle charging 
and collecting. The device is called a single stage electrostatic precipitator. Whereas there will be two stage electrostatic precipitator, they are you know separate electrode pairs perform the charging and collecting function simultaneously. So, these are two stages you know electrostatic precipitators. So, these two types of electrostatic precipitator are available in the market based on the same principle basically that particles will be charged initially then you know it will be passed to that electric field where that two oppositely charged electrode will be placed and according to the type of you know charged particles that will be migrated to the oppositely charged you know electrode and then it will be collected from there ok. I think you understood that. Now, let us see that what is that corona discharge here, how does corona form ions here, you will see that in the picture corona mechanism based on which that ions is formed. Here in this case you will see that a situation of applied active high voltage at several thousands volts you can say between two electrodes that electrodes may be fine wire or plate or rod that will exploit in generating a corona which forms ions here see this is how corona is formed here from this electrode you will see that how that corona will be discharging from that electrode and surrounding that electrode the ions will be releasing and then you know that ions will be you know attaching to the particles and then those particles as per their characteristics will be migrated to the opposite discharged electrode ok. So, these ions whatever released from that corona at its high voltage from this electrode ok will charge that particles in the you know open space. So, this is actually the mechanism of corona discharge based on which that particle can be charged. Now, there should be a certain design equation based on which that you can assess this electrostatic precipitator. Here in this picture you will see that one plate where the particles deposited those particles will come from the air stream after getting charged and it will be depositing on its opposite charged electrode. And here the chamber it will have perimeter and some cross sectional area that is denoted by P and AC respectively. And through this you know cross section a gas that will you know flowing containing that charged particles. Now, those charged particles will be depositing on the surface of this you know chamber or this electrode. Now, in this case assume that particle number concentration will be uniform at any point across the device there that means across this you know that electrode here plate type electrode. Now, the electrostatic force on a particle would charge Q. Now, whenever particles will be charged there will be a certain amount of charge will be there that is you know denoted by Q. So, this electrostatic force on a particle with charge Q can be you know calculated based on its you know strength of electric field. So, what is that strength of electric field that is denoted by E and charge is Q. So, we can say that the electrostatic force on a particle which is acting that will be is equal to Q into E which can be represented by equation number 1. And then when that electrical migration of that particle will happen then particles will be then migrated at a certain velocity that migration velocity 
can be calculated based on this equation number 2, which is depending on the size of the particle. If you increase the size of the particle, that means more finer particles will have more, you know, migration velocity, that means higher migration velocity, whereas coarser particles will relatively, you know, have, you know, lower migration velocity of that particle. So, equation 2 is basically the, you know, equation for that calculation of electrical migration velocity of the particle. This is basically Q e c c by 3 pi mu into dp. This migration velocity also depends on whether these particles are in a air medium or liquid medium that you can do also in a liquid medium that in liquid medium particles also can be charged and then it will be migrated to the oppositely charged electrode. So, that migration velocity will be depending on depending on the you know viscosity of the fluid. Higher viscous fluid will give you that lower migration velocity of that particle. And there will be a some other hydrostatic or hydrodynamic you know uh, behavior whenever particles will be migrating. There may be you know some collision between particles and there you will see that particle particle collision may hinder that you know smooth movement of that you know particles towards the electrode. There will be hindrance or there will be some resistance to flow of that particles. Because of that you know uneven distribution of the particles or charge also. So, in that case you will see that there will be a some you know variation of that migration velocity. So, to get that average migration velocity that you have to consider some correct, correction factor. Okay. So, that correction factor is you know taken care here denoted by Cc and this Cc is called slip correction factor because there will be a collision between particles and because of which there will be hindrance of that migration velocity of that particle and for that you are considering here some correction factor. That correction factor will give you that value from the experimental observation. Now, that charge Q, how can you calculate that charge Q? The charge Q is equal to the product of the number of, you know, charges that is denoted by ZP and also the charge on an electron E. So, the Q will be equal to generally ZP into E. And then we can assess that what will be the you know layer thickness that is deposited by that particles or formed by that particle deposition on the electrode. So, if we define that wall layer thickness dy such that all particles in dy here in the picture shown in this you know in this direction that you know layer will be there with a particular thickness that thickness can be you know dy. So, particles whenever it will be depositing with respect to time dy will be increasing and in the axial position suppose the dx in vertical direction you will see that at a particular x direction for a small you know thickness of that you know or small strip of that you know vertical distance for that what will be the wall thickness that is formed by particle deposition. In that case, what will be the fraction of that particles based on that thickness that also you can be able to calculate. So, if we consider that if we define that wall layer thickness dy in such a way it is formed that all particles in dy are captured over the distance dx. So, we can write dy will be equal to then v y into dt because for a small time dt if the particles is migrating with 
de velocity then you can say that dy will be equal to ve into dt and then dt can be expressed by dx by u dx is what is that in the vertical direction what is the small distance dx and u is the velocity based on which that you know gas will be flowing so you can write dy will be equal to ve into dt that will be equal to ve into dx by u now based on this you will be able to calculate what will be the fraction of particles that is captured in a distance dx that will be basically the ratio of cross sectional area of the wall layer to the overall cross sectional area of the device so that will be denoted by this equation number 4 mathematically so here dx will be equal to p into dy by ac so dx is basically what unit fraction of particles that is captured that will be equal to p into dy by ac okay where pl is the a that will be equal to collector surface area and u will be equal to particle laden gas velocity and V is the electrical migration velocity. Okay. So, after that, if we do a balance on particle number over the section dx, that will give you this equation here. So, it is u into ac into nx minus nx plus dx. So, this is the difference in number of particles deposition and that will be equal to what p dy by ac into ns uh, nx at this uh, location x into u into ac this is basically what the fraction of the particles okay that is deposited upon what is that cross sectional area that is here so what will be the cross sectional area and then what is that what will be the volume so upon that what will be the total number of particles out of total volume then you can get it so this number of particles can be obtained from this change of particle number based with respect to time also so then taking the limit as dx is equal to 0 for a constant time period so, we can say that dy will be equal to v e into dx by u. Okay. So, in this case, integrated subject to n0 is equal to n0 here, that means at 0 time. So, n0 will be equal to, you know, dn by dx that will be equal to minus p v e by sc to u into n. So, equation 5a can be derived from this you know equation here okay and then after substitution of this ac into u as q we can get this after integration nl will be equal to n0 into exponent of minus p ac by u that integrated 0 to l ve dx that will be equal to n0 exponent of minus a by l by q into integrated within a limit of 0 to l to be dx. So, after simplification and integration, you will see that this equation number 5b can be obtained. Okay. So, this equation will give you that what will be the number of particles within this length l that will be deposited on this particle uh, that means uh, deposited in this you know electrode okay within a certain time okay that depends on what will be the initial number of particles already there and also what will be the you know volumetric flow rate of the particle laden gases and also migration velocity of that particle. So, here 
Q is represented here volumetric flow rate of gas through the unit, PL is basically the collector surface area and V is the electrical migration velocity and U is the particle laden gas velocity. So, from this equation number 5b, you will be able to calculate what will be the number of particles deposited within a certain length L. Now, after that, if the electrical migration velocity can be assumed to be constant, so there from this equation number 5b, we can have this nl will be equal to n0 into exponent of minus a v e by q. And accordingly, the collection efficiency can be expressed by this equation as you know that eta will be equal to 1 minus exponent of minus a v e by q. Okay. So, here that eta will be equal to what would the initial minus you know at a certain time what will be the particle number upon by initial. So, based on which you can get this equation number 7 with the help of equation number 6. So, that collection efficiency then can be calculated by equation number 7, where this V e is the main important factor here that will actually affect the efficiency of that collection of particle where V e is defined by this equation number 8 here and Q also important if you increase the particle laden gas velocity there in the electrostatic precipitator what will happen this exponent of these terms will you know increase that means here efficiency will be decreased. So, higher gas flow rate will give you that you know uh, higher gas velocity will give you that and lower efficiency of that you know collection efficiency. Now, some important points that you have to remember in this case of electrostatic precipitator for separation of that particle. So, in this case particle surging in an electrostatic precipitator that will occur in the gas space between the electrodes where the gas ions generated by the corona bombard and attached to the particles and the gas ions may reach concentrations as high as 10 to the power 15 ions per meter cube. Also one important point is that a 1 micrometer particle typically acquires the order of 300 electron charges whereas a 10 micrometer particles can attain 30,000 electron charges. So, this is the actually uh, typical uh, some important points that you have to remember here. That means here that electrostatic precipitators efficiency depends on particle size and strength of the electric field and also flow rate of the particle laden gas. And uh, main important point here particle surging for this you know electrostatic uh, precipitator and the level of charge that is attained by the particle that depends on gas ion concentration, also conductive properties of the particle, electric field strength and particle size. So, these are the four points that is very important whenever you are going to charge the particles. Actually that you know two mechanism by which that particles can be charged. One is called field charging, another will be diffusion charging. These two type of charging depends on actually the flow characteristics of the particles. In the field charging you will see that ions are accelerated towards the particles by the external electric field whereas diffusion charging it is caused by the irregular thermal motion of the ions. Okay. So, that you have to remember there are two types of you know particle charging, field charging and diffusion charging. Up to this you have to remember at least. The field mechanism dominates for particles which will be larger than 1 micrometer in diameter whereas, the particles smaller than 0.1 micrometer in diameter 
will be having that domination of that diffusion mechanism for its surging. So, we understood from this lecture what is the electrostatic precipitator, how that electrostatic precipitator will be working. Basically, the particles are you know supplied or particles are allowed to pass through that electrostatic precipitator where the electrodes will be there either in one stage or two stage you know mode where one electrode will be you know discharging that ions by corona bombarding in an atmosphere of high electric volts and after charging those particles it will be migrating to the opposite charged electrodes which is actually made based on that imposition of the electric field in the chamber. And when that particles that is oppositely charged depositing on the oppositely charged part, uh, uh, electrodes it will be collected by wrapping or other mechanical way and then you have to assess what will be the concentration of that particles or fraction of particles that is deposited out of total you know volume of that you know particles to be supplied and based on which you will be able to calculate what will be the efficiency of the system and what will be the governing equation for calculating that collection efficiency for this you know electrostatic precipitator that we have discussed here and based on that equation you will be able to calculate. That collection efficiency depends on charge of the particles, volumetric flow rate, even migration velocity and size of the particles. I think you understood this uh, you know mechanism of this electrostatic uh, uh, you know mechanism of particle separation. In the next lecture we will try to discuss more about that separation of particles which will be you know how that particles can be separated by filtration that is by you know fabric or other way. So, in the next lecture it will be you know discussed about that separation by industrial fabric or bag filters. So, thank you for giving attention have a nice day. Thank you.